and uh, then it was this dream part. And uh, back then, even though I just wanted to be pian pianist, I just wrote as a dream conductor in Vienna and just put Amazing. it up. Amazing. And then suddenly I, I found myself here and um, yeah, dreams come true. Yeah. Hi, Andre. It's so lovely to see you. Hello, Petra. Happy to see you. Finally, we made it. Yes. To be our guest today. Well, I'm very happy and um, it's a long time since we saw each other and I took your picture also in the window for, for the moments in lockdown. So Exactly. It was a, it was a year and a half ago already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's mm -hmm. uh, so much has happened. And I mean, in the time we... Everybody didn't know when things will start again, but now you have to tell me everything that happened and and, and you've got a concert coming up. So uh, since yeah, we last things, saw yeah. each other, um, how did things how did things progress then for you with your studies? Everything went well. So um, I'm very happy that uh, today morning, actually, I gave up my diploma uh, thesis finally. So oh, I'm, wow. I'm very happy about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm much more relaxed now and everything's fine. Yeah, I wrote about um, some very interesting project I did in Palestina in uh, last November. Um, yeah, it was about, uh, um, there is a foundation, Barem Bam Said for music. Um, it's in Ramallah. Um, and um, yeah, I was invited to conduct there an orchestra, Palestinian Young Musicians Orchestra. There are uh, wonderful young uh, uh, Palestinians um, studying all over Europe. Some teenagers studying there, of course, and, uh, at, at the music school, conservatoire. And uh, many of them are already in, in Europe studying on, on good um, music universities. So I, I had a privilege to work with them for a week, make a kind of workshop, let's say like that. I mean, I rehearsed with them for a few days and then we had some concerts um, and it was really um, absolutely special experience. Yeah, it's wow. unique. So, so I wrote uh, about Oh, and you wrote about that experience? Yeah, mm. I wrote uh, mostly about the, my... Um, my I wrote about the, the foundation and about the organization and about the orchestra, a bit of uh, something about Arabic music and um, about the repertoire I, I, I did there. And um, of course, then about the musicians, how I work with them um, mm -hmm. from the beginning until the concert. And of course, I did the self-reflection, how what I have could have done better or and um, yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a nice diploma. It's, yeah, it sounds amazing. But what was it about this project that you that made you want to write about it? Yeah, because it's special. First of all, um, it's located. The location is interesting. Yeah, in Palestina, and then um, it's the special thing is there are only Palestinian people, the musicians, uh, which is very special about it. And then the special thing is that they're mixed between prof young professionals. I mean, they are all young professionals, but they're professionals who are already studying at university they're in Berlin or Scotland or Italy or um, Switzerland. And so, and, um, <clears throat> And, but they are mixed as well with these teenagers, yeah, who are still not at the, the academy. So it was also, I needed to see um, what is their experience actually. So some of them are really amazing, yes, but some of them still uh, need to uh, need uh, to have this experience with orchestra, with um, playing in orchestra and with uh, working with conductor. Uh, so yeah, it was, there were some um, things that I need to um, have yeah. a, a special program, how to, how to manage to, to work with them and uh, it was extremely inspiring not just for them for me for for me it's oh, really? extremely inspiring yes yes mm -hmm. because they are extremely motivated they're oh, extremely motivated whatever whatever uh, i said they just took it and immediately start and and um, we worked many hours per day at least six hours per day we, we were rehearsing and then and uh, but they never had enough they always wanted more and uh, in every break uh, they would play their own Arabic music. They were improvised, and um, and they're extremely um, cute. And um, um, yeah, it's, it was. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you now if there was a difference between the professional and the uh, the, the the 
what do you call that? The amateur or not amateur, but but the musicians youth. who didn't do youth. Yeah. The youth. Yeah. yeah, yeah was there a yeah. difference in motivation? Yeah. So the, um, yes, of course. So they're not the amateurs; they're professionals, but they're youth professionals, young professionals. Okay. And of course, there is a big difference. Mm, I had a chance in last um, few months to conduct also professional orchestras. Finally, uh, it, it, um, I, I got some chances, and uh, um, I'm very happy about it. Um, so I, I regularly regularly conduct now Bad Reichenhall Philharmonie in in Bad Reichenhall in Bayern. And uh, now I had my concert in Romania, uh, in Brasov, Kronstadt, and I'm happy to come, uh, come there again. And so it's going, it is going slowly, but uh, surely, and I'm very excited about it all. So to compare these orchestras, for example, with, um, um, with uh, uh, Philastin, Young Musician Orchestra, of course, the, the main difference is um, experience. And the main difference is they, uh, um, they gather together a few times a year for a special project. They don't they don't play every week together every day. Um, <clears throat> so for the special projects, they come together and then um, they do a project as they did with me in November. So um, that means they don't have this experience of playing together all the time and breathing. So it was my um, job to put 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 them together to inspire them to to bring them something from vienna school let's say and then from from um, vienna tradition especially in playing mozart um about articulation about um yeah style of playing let's let's put it like that okay. in easy words yeah yeah but now um for you when you started in music what was or what what made you decide to study conducting oh well um you know i was studying a piano in zagreb yeah and i i was uh i, I wanted to be a pianist and uh, i practiced every day a lot and uh, i was very uh, curious about the uh, piano music and i was actually very much in love in in, in, in piano itself um mm -hmm. but then I decided to do Erasmus in Vienna. And before I did that, they told me there is this Vorbereitungslehrgang um, um, course. It's like a preparatory course for conductors. And a few people around me told me, Andre, maybe you should try this. You, um, ju just try, see if you like it. So I went to Vienna to, to do Erasmus. And at, and at the same time, I did this preparatory course at MDV. And I found it very interesting. And uh, I decided to do the entrance exam for the real thing. And um, I passed. So I went, came back to Zagreb to do my diploma, to, to play my um, um, diploma concert. And I came back to Vienna to start conducting. And it was a completely new world for me. And uh, I was extremely excited. I, I could say, actually, that I'm still very excited, yes. I Even mean, though it's already seven years, I'm still excited. You know, every time I leave Vienna and I come back to Vienna, I always have a very, very strong heartbeat, very fast heartbeat. I'm very, uh, very excited to be in Vienna and I'm always very happy and proud to be the part of, of this scene here and the part of uh, Music University of Vienna. And um, yeah, and soon I'm done. I mean, it's now in June, I will do my last um, concert, Abschluss concert. Yeah. Now in May, I have this uh, uh, in, uh, exams, diploma exams, and then in, in June is the final big concert in Musikverein with the radio orchestra. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to conduct there. Yeah, and then we'll see. Yeah, but so, so when you were younger, there was no aspiration. There was nothing that, that you thought uh, you wanted to be a conductor. It was all your piano. You know, th this is a very, I just uh, spoke with my parents about it. When I, when I started the um, piano in Zagreb, uh, I think I was on the second year. There was this professor, um, and she told us, "Okay, put put uh, on the paper your goals, and then on the other paper paper put your um, your dreams." Mm -hmm. So goals are something that that it's already could be realistic in your in your head. Something you you, you go towards it, and, and 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 it's catchable. Dream is is still not catchable, but yeah, it makes you go over the border or through so for these goals i put i want to live in, in many cities in europe i want to learn a lot of languages i want to be a good musician and you know to to learn very good uh, 
harmony and polyphony and to composition and 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 I want to I want to be able to improvise. I had this like goals and there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and uh, then it was this dream part. And uh, back then, even though I just wanted to be pian pianist, I just wrote as a dream conductor in Vienna and just put Amazing. it up. Amazing. And then suddenly I, I found myself here and um, yeah, dreams come true. Yeah. It, well, yes, dreams do come true. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, I absolutely believe it. No, I do believe it. Well, I so had I, a, yeah. No, as I said, I'm just a, a super lucky person. And I uh, always on my path, yeah, because I'm in Vienna since seven years or, or eight, I always had people who, who supported me in many ways and uh, to be where I'm now. Yeah, that's amazing. But you see, then uh, you also attract that to you because you're so happy and 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 uh, you feel so when happy. You say, to when yeah. you say happy, uh, do you know what my last name means? No. My last name means happy. Vessel. Vessel really? means in all Slavic, uh, Slavic languages and yeah. also in, uh, in Romanian. So all Slavic languages and Romanian, uh, Vessel means happy. In, in, in German, my German name would be Andreas Fröhlich, or my Italian name would be Andrea Allegro, or something like that. Oh, really? Oh, what a, what a, um, a, a wonderful uh, gift to have a surname like that. So you, you have to be happy. <laughs> now you know my secret. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is an amazing story. But... But really, it, I, I believe in, in dreams that come true. I think we should all write it down. And it, it yeah, yeah. I'm still very grateful about this moment when yeah. she, even the professor told us, do it. Yeah. I would yeah. never, otherwise, I would, yeah, I would never even thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but still... your, your parents, are they, are they musically or musical? Do they, no, are no, they no. musicians? No. I mean, my, my, my father, when he was, um, in his twenties, he, he sang in a in a choir. It's a very big um, amateur choir in Croatia. It's very popular, even Goran Kovacic. And my brother is singing there as well now. So they, they are musical in sense of um, um, having good ears. As, as my mother as well. You know, my mother used to sing to me every day when I was a little baby and mm -hmm. kid. And uh, I think somehow it, it, it stayed with me. And um, so they, they were not professional musicians, but uh, somehow I was surrounded with music, not with classical music, but generally, yeah. But uh, yeah, in the, in the kindergarten, the, 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 um, the person who works in kindergarten, she told my parents, you should definitely put your son in a, in a music school. So my father tried, okay, Andre, would you play guitar? I said, no, I want piano. And he tried with any other instrument. I insisted on piano. So yeah, that's, so that's you had to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's interesting always for me that, um, you know, I heard of a cellist who went to a science, um, like a science museum and, and somebody there played the cello to, uh, to um, it was an experiment, you know, to uh, talk about the vibration and the sound and so on. And that sound of the cello made him want to play the cello. So it's very interesting for me how people, uh, how musicians are attracted to a specific instrument. Yeah, I always uh, ask myself uh, that as well, actually, when, when children uh, come to music school and they need to choose an instrument, then how do they choose? I want to play oboe or fagot, bassoon, yeah. Yeah? Or, or flute. I have no idea. I just knew that I want piano because when I was in kindergarten, I was playing beside the piano all the time, uh, singing beside the piano all the time. So somehow, somehow it was installed in my head that I, I, I need to play piano. I have no idea how. But do you still play a lot of piano? Well, yes, I do, but not in, in that um, range. Let's say I don't, I don't do solo concerts anymore since seven years or six, seven years. I love chamber music. I love playing with other musicians. I love this co music communication. And I believe that every conductor uh, should, should never give up his instrument. I think every conductor should um, keep making music he, he, herself or himself. This is what, what keeps us uh, alive as musicians. Yeah. Otherwise, if we only um, do a secondhand music as a conductor, of course, we work with orchestra and we, we tell them how to, how to make music. Uh, then I think one loses the 
a bit of reality, I would say. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I will change my mind later. But I, I strongly believe that uh, now that the uh, conductor should uh, always play an instrument, whatever, which one, but make music herself, himself. Yeah. And, and what is your um, feeling about uh, uh, playing different genres? And, and even now for you as, as a conductor, um, do you think it's you, you have to specify and, and be a classical conductor or, or do you think it's good? Well, that's also a good question. But of course, I, for the last 12 years, I'm, I'm educated for classical music and I will definitely do uh, uh, I will definitely do classical music for the rest of my life and it's going to be my job because it's, it is my passion. On the other hand, um, I grew up on completely different music. I started with classical music when I was 17, 18, when I start to, uh, started going to concerts of classical music. Uh, when I was a younger teenager, I, I, I grew up on my father's and mother's music from 70s and 80s like pop and rock, uh, I don't know, from Beatles through um, Led Zeppelin, through Pink Floyd, uh, through Michael Jackson, and then through, what else, Toto. And uh, That's and my yeah, generation. Was, yeah, so I, I played <laughs> in a band, I played Whitesnake and Toto, and, you know, and um, a good friend of mine with whom I played in band, he's a, today he's a front man, new frontman of Whitesnake. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I had this phase of, of trying uh, all the genres and, uh, um, yeah, I was not brilliant in it, but <laughs> I, at least I went through it and I, 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 I learned how to love it, how to enjoy it. And uh, I'm very happy I had this experience because if you put me now a song of Michael Jackson, I will definitely start to moonwalk for you, you know, not oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, it's still there. It's still there. And uh, yeah, so I, I always wanted to, uh, when, talk, when I was talking about uh, improvisation, after I finish these classical studies, I would love to, uh, to, to give some chance uh, to jazz. I would love to, to learn myself a bit of jazz music, just for myself. You know, when I sit on piano that I can, that I can play something. Oh, so yeah. you have to, is this something now you have to, you know, is it some uh, completely different to what you're doing now? So if you, if you, for example, conduct a jazz orchestra. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, be... I will not conduct a jazz orchestra. No, no. I will, I will stay in, in classical genre, definitely. This was just a uh, private personal um, wish that I would love to have one day as a, yeah, as a tool in my head and oh, fingers okay. and ears. Yes. But now, Andre, you've got a concert coming up. Tell me about this concert. So on 11th of May, um, here in Vienna, we will do a concert in a concert house in Mozartzal with uh, my orchestra, Ton der Jugend, Symphony Orchestra, Wien. And um, it's a, uh, these concerts are special for me because I founded um, this orchestra in 2017 with a, a good friend of mine, Dragos Dimitriou. And um, um, at that moment, we also worked uh, together with uh, Giuseppe Terza, the, the conductor. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, and mm -hmm. we are also very good friends. And um, we were, we had some amazing projects together. We did uh, also a big uh, audition for, for, the, um, for the orchestra members. Yeah, we uh, engaged very good professors who were in the jury and uh, we, we um, took many, many good musicians into the orchestra. Uh, at one point, um, um, Giuseppe founded then another orchestra, and uh, Drago and me stayed with uh, Ton der Jugend, and um, we went uh, now again with uh, with new seasons, let's say. So this uh, this year we will have two concerts together, and uh, now in 11th of May, and then in uh, November, I think it's 24th of November. Um, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a team of Dragos and myself and uh, another um, a lady, a young lady, uh, Helena Telen, and she will do the she does always the production and uh, yeah, we are, we are we are a very good team here. We have um, around 30, 35 fixed musicians that we are um, always inviting for our projects, and this is going to be a very nice concert. We are starting with. Um, a uh, piece of uh, Sarkocevic. Sarko Luka Sarkocevic is a Croatian composer um, and of uh, 18th century. 
from uh, Dubrovnik. Back then it was the Republic of Ragusa, Republic of Dubrovnik. And the um, connection with Vienna is that he, he used to also be a, a diplomat in Vienna. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so bringing him back here, uh, it was also a wish of mine. And um, then comes, uh, so I will do a small symphony uh, from him. And then uh, we will do the Mozart piano concerto in D minor. And the, the, the solist uh, is going to be um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, Greek pianist, uh, Nefeli Musura. She's a... Um, yeah, she, she's an amazing pianist. She plays all over uh, Europe and and um, and she finished in Salzburg back then, her piano studies and um, oh, oh, we are very good friends and um, we had this initiative together and um, it, it, it came true. Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah, and then the second part of the concert, we are going to perform uh, one uh, small waltzer from uh, Alma Deutscher. Alma Deutscher, she's... Um, She's famous in the world as a wunderkind, as a little uh, Mozart, uh, um, and uh, she she wrote as she was very young. Uh, I think she was around uh, 11, 12, when she already wrote her opera, and her opera is wow. about performing in Salzburg and everywhere in the world. And and um, but uh, the reason why I also wanted to play her piece because I admire her, her very much and she's also a colleague of mine now. We know each really? other for a couple of years and she's 16 now and she studies conducting with me. Oh. And it's, I find it absolutely amazing. She, um, <clears throat> she goes to the same uh, lectures, uh, lectures with me, you know, repetition or general bus or um, conducting lesson. And, 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 and she's so good. She, I mean, I mean, um, she's still learning how to conduct, but but yeah. this music, musical, not just basis, mu generally musical knowledge and that and and um, um, Kernan, uh, what what she can do, uh, yeah. it's absolutely uh, admi to admire. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I decided yeah to 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 play a piece uh, from her. A Serena and Waltz, and I'm very looking forward to this piece. And then, then we, have, we will going to finish the concert with Jupiter Symphony, it's the last symphony of Mozart, 41 in C major, and it's going to be, yeah, bombastic of in fact. It's oh, going to be really? really, really beautiful. Yeah, and the musicians in the orchestra they are really wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Now we have a special guest for the concertmeister this time, and. Uh, uh, Benjamin Herzl, he's a great young violinist, and he will be our concert master for this project. Um, yeah, and all all these um, uh, students in in the orchestra are most uh, mostly are already uh, um, finished MDV concert fach or 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 still still studying, but they are all extre extremely extremely talented. And um, um, yeah, all, all, even though they are younger, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, under 30, they, they already have a lot of experience playing uh, as a soloist or orchestras. And uh, and um, I'm extremely uh, proud and happy that they accepted um, our proposals and that they are all coming together to uh, for, for, the, for these projects and for this project especially. So this orchestra, you, you have specific projects that you do, so it's not a full-time, this uh, orchestra. Exactly. It's about projects, yeah. yeah. Um, of course, it depends on many things. It depends especially on sponsors. It depends on many other situations. But our first concert was 2017. Um, uh, it was my debut actually in Vienna, in Concert House, um, with a very famous uh, pianist, Andrei Korobenikov. And um, yeah, actually he initiated this uh, cooperation because uh, as he's a famous pianist, he wanted to uh, help a younger colleague, me. So mm. this is how we uh, made the concept in uh, in Vienna, and mm. uh, he introduced me to many um, interesting people in Vienna back then, and uh, I got my audience instantly, let's say, and it, it just kept rolling. And um, now um, I can say we have our um, we we really do have our audience that are buying tickets and coming mm. to our concert, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. Yes. So is it important, do you think, for a conductor to have this like an orchestra and and to um, do your own well, sort of projects? 
Yeah, the important important thing is, is for young conductor that 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 the young conductor uh, gathers experience in conducting orchestras. It can be in many ways. It can be master classes. It can be festivals. It can be competitions. It can be one owns orchestra. Um, it can be really whatever. At MDV, our music university, we have a very good. Um, I uh, think that, that we actually conduct the uh, orchestra every week, so we are training this. Oh, okay. But of course, uh, it, it is one, one thing to work at the university with orchestra and outside. So this outside is also very important. And um, I'm, again, uh, lucky to, to get all of these opportunities. Mm. Yeah, so I really hope that, uh, uh, of course, you are invited, and uh, I hope uh, whoever is watching this video uh, will come to our concert on 11th yes. of May. Yes, yeah. it sounds amazing. And it's, um, yeah, and it's also interesting, your choice of music. Is it, um, is it difficult sometimes to, to get a program together? Is it something yeah. that you just think about? Yeah, as well, one needs to be very careful, of course. I remember my how I did my first concerts in 2017, for example, the pianist said he wants to do a uh, Schnittke piano concerto. Um, it's a, it's a piece from 1979 and uh, it's an absolutely amazing piece for strings and piano. And then he wanted to play as well, uh, uh, Bach piano concerto. He, so in the first part, he played two big concertos, which was amazing. And in the second part, I did the uh, Tchaikovsky string serenade. And then what happened, um, there was a, um, a person attending the concert and uh, he was very um, happy with uh, what he heard. And he asked me if I would like next year to, um, to, make, um, to play for him and his business partners, mm -hmm. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I said, hmm, let me think about it. And uh, so I thought maybe let's make a big concert, a big event, and I will include Star Wars in it. And so I made a program in the, uh, in the first part, uh, we did Casablanca for Max Steiner, and we did Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue, and the pianist was uh, Dragos Dimitriou, uh, partner mm. from, my, uh, from our association. And, um, and in the second part, it was John Williams, it was Harry Potter and Star Wars. And, and it worked very well, and uh, um, yeah, we, we managed these are big projects it, it it also costs a lot you know uh, with everything with the, the hall and all the musicians um, and we always organized everything on the highest level that means that we had a very good tone master uh, very good videos um, um, you know professional booklets professional people who are writing about it and um, yeah it was always a big deal for us and now, uh, and then came COVID, of course, and but um, but we did other concerts. We were also on a tour in Slovenia, and uh, mm. so anyway, now we we do this in May, and then in November we do um, a special gala concert um, in organization of Croatian Embassy oh, uh, okay. because it, it, we are we are celebrating thirty years of uh, Croatian um, um, acceptance and um, recognition, yeah. international recognition. And um, so they asked me, because they were so happy with this con film concert, film wow. music concert, if we could do something similar for, for this occasion, yeah, for celebrating the year. And uh, so we made a program and we are going to do another concert in November uh, with uh, uh, Croatian music and Austrian music and Croatian and Austrian film music. Oh, yeah. this sounds interesting. This sounds wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will also let you know about it. Yes, definitely. Oh, I would love. To. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. But um, but Andre, now tell me, what is your wish now for the future? You you you've made already one wish for being a conductor. Now you've get you get another wish. You can now make another wish, and we have it here on Zoom recorded. So <laughs> go for so it. Now, now I'm a conductor, and the next step is to be a very good conductor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is you know why I love this job and why I'm super happy to um to have this as my profession because it's a, it's a constant learning. So I, actually, I, I'm paid to learn something and and to 
and then to conduct it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, this is this is why I find my job uh, so fascinating. All the time, new repertoire, new uh, new informations, new learning, learning, learning every every day. New people, new orchestras, and it's it's an extremely exciting life in an exciting profession. Of course, it, it's stressful. It, it has other things, but uh, if 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 one decides to accept it, then um, yeah, I enjoy it very much. So the next step to conduct as much as possible, to conduct as much as uh, uh, orchestras as possible, to um, yeah, to be on the music scene, just mm -hmm. to you know, to learn, to work, to make music. Yeah, this, this is the next step. One day I would love to, yes, have a, have a family and maybe situate somewhere, but, but um, that this is, um, this is a bit far away now. Now, now I'm in, in this, uh, um, prime time, I would say, of my life, finishing my studies, getting the opportunistic opportunities to conduct. You know, because for the last five, six, seven years, I always ask my, ask myself, are these opportunities going to come or not? I was always nervous. I was always anxious. Does it come? Does it come? Does it come? How do I get an engagement? How how do I conduct it? And now, just like that, Amazing. Luck, mm. it it came. I I don't even. I don't know you know, even know how to give an advice to younger colleagues except <laughs> uh, yeah, everything I, yeah. I, I sometimes wonder if it has to do with uh, the fact that you are prepared now for it. You know, that previously maybe yes. you were not prepared and that the, the now it's yeah. the right it's the right thing. Yeah. yeah. I even I even even sometimes think I, I started too early with some things. You know, I, I wish I could <laughs> often I wish I could come go back in time and 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 be a better student i, mm -hmm. I have a feeling that I, I skipped some years of my studies because i was too concentrated on how do i show myself somewhere how do i make some concerts how do i go to different festivals and 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 um i sacrificed some time for this uh, instead of really doing my homeworks more properly and i'm i'm sad about it but uh lesson learned Let's yeah. put it like that. And um, this is something one one should never skip in this job. And at the end, I took this seriously. And uh, now there is a chance. It's false, yeah. And I think it's that let go, uh, that idea of letting go and being in the moment, what is needed to do in the moment, you have to do, and then it will all fall into place. But it's... It's not when when uh, when we're young. It's not always easy to um, to do that because you always feel you have to sort it out and and be in control. So I think that's patience, patience, patience. Something yeah. uh, many of us don't have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we want it all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. that, so, but you yes, know, everything comes. Everything comes in its yeah. own time. It is. If anything, I learned. Yeah. Yeah. But now um, I have one more thing to ask you. Can you do a shout out to your favorite restaurant or your favorite coffee shop? Do you have a favorite? Yeah. yeah. In Vienna or generally, I mean. Where, wherever. I'm going to link it to the to the interview. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's too hard. This is, the, like, this is the hardest question of the interview. Really? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it, it's super hard you know uh, uh, I, i'm actually daily i'm eating in menza at university oh really <laughs> <laughs> well i know you... actually i made friends there with uh, with uh, with, uh, with the cook and uh, we 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 hang out now and then and um, yeah i just love to come there to say hello to my colleagues to eat something quickly and uh, we'll go... make a shot yeah but we'll make a shot at is it here at the mdv yeah, it's in the way the campus at Levenplatz. So I go there to sometimes to drink coffee or to have some lunch, and it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and who is the chef there? Oh, um, I don't know what's the name of the chef, but Pavel Pavel Gunja. He's a he, he's a cook there, and he's oh, he's, he's a cook. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he and his wife uh, even came to my concerts, and I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll 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 have to give him <laughs> a shout out then. <laughs> but I know you make the best coffee in Vienna. I, I do. 
Yeah. You remember? <laughs> okay, now it's not bad. <laughs> I love coffee. I drink coffee. Oh my God. At least three, four per day. Otherwise, mm. I would not survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From... <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to composite somehow. So, yeah. 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 Oh, but this is so amazing! Oh, I will, I'll make the I'll make the shout out for for him. Since, since I'm in Vienna, since seven years, since I'm at this university, uh, I, I I go there every day, and I always made friends with them, and uh, it's it, it's just cool. I love it. Wonderful. Okay, so when you're there again, um, and are are public allowed in your in the grounds again or not? I can have a coffee with you there. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah. you you just write to me. Not just for the students, it's for it. Uh, everybody can come there and then. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, so let me know when you're there again. I come for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah, because we are neighbors actually, and you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're you live so nearby. It's amazing. Exactly, I can come. So Andre, thank you so much for your time. It was really lovely to talk to you, and I'm so looking forward to the concert. Thank you so much. It, it, yeah. It's a pleasure, and I'm very happy that we finally uh, met and uh, did this interview. And it's yeah. gonna it's gonna stay forever. It's gonna be a nice document to have it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and we can talk again in November for your next concert. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you Thank can you tell so everything. For your support, that's uh, that's yeah. very kind. Of. Everything that happens. Okay, so have a lovely afternoon. You too, Petra. And I see you around. See you I'll very see soon. You for the coffee. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Bye, Peter. Bye.